Margaret Holloway, the central antagonist of Silent Hill Homecoming, the person behind the disappearances across Shepherd's Glen. While her actions are not solely responsible for the events of the game, she plays a major role in the story's conclusion and the fates of multiple characters. Along with Elle and Nora, Margaret is a member of the Holloway family, one of the four clans which founded the town, who inherited from their god's pact the role of judge and the responsibility of killing their children with strangulation every fifty years. The child Margaret chose was her youngest, Nora, who becomes the monster Aphyxia and a boss later in the game. The name Holloway comes from the Old English Holweg, meaning road with a hollow. It was a place name often assigned to families who lived near hollows or holy places, such as churches. Some interpretations of the name interpret it as Holy Way, the right path. The first member of the family the player meets is Margaret, the mother, who greets Alex almost as if nothing is wrong, clearly fishing for information about the man and what he's doing in town. At certain parts of the game, she can be found in her office in Town Hall, once again as if nothing at all has changed. For her, these foggy streets are no threat. She is completely unconcerned, because she has decided to embrace this darkness. Following in a long line of Silent Hill holy women, Margaret believes she is in the right that she knows the right path for the people of her town, and is willing, even eager, to kill in defense of her beliefs. She feels the town should return to the old ways, that after having the town's protection fall and monsters enter, her response was to begin kidnapping, brainwashing, and killing the remnants of Shepherd's Glen. It is because of her so many are missing, not the monsters or the fog, but the human woman hiding in plain sight. Her relationship with her children is troubled. In various notes and diaries, it is revealed that both daughters have a strained relationship with Margaret. Nora felt Elle got away with everything, while she was never good enough, mirroring the relationship and feelings Alex has about his parents. Elle felt her mother was far too distant and uncaring, doing only the bare minimum to protect her family. It seems to point to what becomes painfully clear later in the game, that for all that Margaret says she's doing this for her family, she doesn't actually care for or love her daughters. She kills Nora for her family, but the moment that Elle disagrees with her, Margaret is quick to condemn her too without any attempt at changing her mind. Of the four families, Margaret is the only parent to show no remorse for her actions. She is angry that the spell failed, that their sacrifices were in vain. But that doesn't come from a place of regret or love or feeling her daughter died for nothing. It seems more like she is angry that her work was undone, that the traditions she'd followed for so long turned to naught. Dr. Fitch, Mayor Bartlett, even Alex's parents are shown having regrets. Margaret hasn't a single sign of remorse or love in her. She has been killing possibly hundreds of people over the last four years, and the woman shows no emotional fallout from the immensity of death surrounding her or the blood on her hands. She has no sympathy or empathy. People she has known her entire life, family members, characters who likely would have been her friends, no one seems to instill in her even a moment's hesitation before she kills them and she is happy to get her own hands dirty. While speaking to Alex late in the game, she says there is no good or evil, only chaos and order. 
beliefs that stem from the Order, and sound similar to lines from previous games. So long as there is chaos, a hard-to-define term which allows Margaret to broadly interpret events in her favor, she feels justified in doing what she deems best to return to order. In this case, a town which obeys her will. As town judge, Margaret is involved in the judgment of others. Her family's sacrifices are consigned to the noose in the wording of the pact, a reference to the deaths of criminals at the end of a rope in the era the pact was written. She must hang her own children. Many of the themes of the Holloway family tie back into the role of judge. The final confrontation with her is in a prison. The fight with Aphyxia takes place in a gas chamber, a modern method of killing criminals, with Margaret tied to the chair as the prisoner in question. The other role given to the Holloways is the role of Keeper, the historians of the town. The ideas behind the cult's pact are all based in Western magical tradition, and each death is associated with the elements, believed to have been the cornerstones of creation and magic, earth, air, water, and fire. Each element has its own history and abilities, and it's long been believed that air contains memory that it is in the air that all history is hidden, and those with the knowledge of how to do so can access the history of the whole world. After her tragic death, Young Nora becomes the monster Aphyxia, a creation influenced by her death and her interests as a child. She loved the book Alice in Wonderland, a similarity to Alessa, a book both girls likely loved for the same reason. It is a story of a young girl escaping to another world. Nora's favorite character in the book was the caterpillar, which reflects in the horrifying appearance of her monstrous form. She played an instrument, a flute, a tragic irony considering her death. The name Aphyxia means suffocation, and Nora means honor, possibly a name chosen by Margaret to reflect how she felt about the child's death, that it would be an honor for her to be killed for the family. In comparison to her mother, Elle is a far more compassionate person. Long into the game's events, she is still looking for missing people, long after others would have lost hope or begun to focus on their own safety. Yet overall, her characterization is far thinner than her mother's. She is a thinly characterized, typical childhood love interest, gentle, caring, vaguely attractive. There is little in her writing that deepens her as a character likely because she was originally someone else. An older idea for Silent Hill Homecoming had the role of Elle filled by Laura from Silent Hill 2. The story would have involved more crossover from that game, but had to eventually be abandoned, which is likely why the character who replaced Laura feels so thin. Her name, in fact, is just French for girl. Yet, imagine what it would be like if she were Laura. How interesting it would be if that were true. How much it might make sense alongside the older canon. Including my theories about Mary Shepard's Sunderland, you get an interesting picture. Why did Laura become so attached to her in the hospital? Perhaps because they were both children of Shepard's Glen's most powerful families. Perhaps she was curious about this woman from her hometown. It would explain why she went to Silent Hill alone. If she had a family in Shepherd's Glen that had forbidden her, as all of the town is forbidden, to go to Silent Hill, she would have had to run away to do it by herself. And it would explain why nothing in town touches her. Not because she is innocent, but because the pact with the god protects her as a citizen of Shepherd's Glen. It's not the story we got, but it's an interesting thought. 
Thank you for listening to this week's Silent Hill Symbolism. This episode was a commission request. Thank you for your support. Next week's will be the last commission in the queue. If you'd like to commission a video on a topic of your choice, head to my Ko-fi site and click on Store. I'd like to thank everyone for their patience and support. I know this has been a weird year for Silent Hill Symbolism, and I've experimented with some things that haven't always worked, but we seem to have hit a turning point, with episode views up over 200%, and it looks as if we'll hit 20k on the YouTube channel sometime this week. Thank you so much for your support. I'll see you next time in Silent Hill Symbolism.